One, two, three. Mic check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten.
If everyone would have a seat, we'll, we'll get started. Oh, you're going to stay up here? Okay. Welcome, and thank you for joining us today, whether in person or virtually through live stream. It's hard to believe that exactly one year ago today, we were celebrating the 150th anniversary of the founding of our college with a large group in Jesse Hall. Looking, <laughs> people don't usually clap for me. Thanks, Dean Dowler. During that celebration, we look back on our golden legacy and ahead to 
our bold future. A lot has changed in the past year. What hasn't changed though is celebrating our college's history, acknowledging those who paved the way for everything we do today while looking to the future with new opportunities. I could not be more honored to recognize Henry Kirkland today, to acknowledge all he did for our students many years ago and what his legacy means to the learning space for our plant science students. I learned of Mr. Kirkland and his contributions to our community, college, and university a couple of years ago at the historic Columbia Cemetery event called History Comes Alive. Robin, I think you were there as well. During the events, actors portrayed those buried in the cemetery based on monologues prepared by Mr. Chris Campbell, executive director of the Boone County History and Culture Center, who will speak in just a few minutes. Mr. Rodney Sheely, a Columbia native who spent 30 years in the New York theater scene portrayed, portrayed Mr. Kirkland. It was through Mr. Sheely's portrayal of Mr. Kirkland, articles in the local newspapers and the State Historical Society of Missouri that I learned of Mr. Kirkland. After joining the University of Missouri's horticulture department as a gardener and greenhouse supervisor, Mr. Kirkland may have been the first African-American to teach at the University of Missouri, although in an informal, unofficial capacity as the university did not allow black people to hold official teaching positions during his lifetime. The head of the horticulture department noticed Mr. Kirkland's skill and asked him to teach the lab component of some classes. At the time, only whites were allowed inside the school building, so Mr. Kirkland taught on the steps of the greenhouses to our students. According to the State Historical Society of Missouri, hundreds of students learned the fine art of pruning and grafting from Mr. Kirkland, where at the, whether at the university or later while he was a businessman at his local farm. The more I learned about Mr. Kirkland, I knew that recognizing him as part of our college's history was something that we needed to do, given the appropriate opportunity. About a year ago, we started planning a renovation of two learning spaces for plant science students in our college. Thus, the opportunity to approach Vice Chancellor and Dean Chris Daubert about the possibility of pursuing naming this learning space in honor of Mr. Kirkland. The hands-on nature of this laboratory echoes what Mr. Kirkland so expertly taught plant science students so many years ago. And what a day to celebrate it, the 151st anniversary of the founding of our great college. While we regret that Mr. Henry Kirkland was not allowed to officially teach our students, today we're celebrating his contributions to education is all more important. By sharing his story with our students, his legacy of education continues. And there's Rodney Sheely right now. Rodney, give everybody a wave. I just talked about you. Rodney is the, the wonderful Columbian who went off and spent 30 years on Broadway and was the gentleman that portrayed Mr. Kirkland. I am delighted that Mr. Chris Campbell is here today to share with you more about Mr. Kirkland's incredible story. Chris has been the director of the Boone County History and Culture Center since 2014 and is a native of Columbia. I did not know that. And although he spent a few decades living in Southern California as a studio administrator and a concert producer, since returning to the Midwest, he has also served as the executive director of the Missouri Symphonic Society and organized Lexington's Missouri Civil War sesquicentennial. He is a member of the Mayor's Task Force for Columbia's Bicentennial, which happens this year. Mr. Campbell, I welcome you up to the podium. Let's give him a hand.
Thank you, Brian, for that warm introduction. It is indeed an honor to be here. On behalf of the community and on behalf of future students, both here at the university and in the local public and private schools, and for all of those who cherish our local history, I thank the University of Missouri for this brilliant and perfect recognition for the university's very, very likely first black instructor, Henry Kirkland. I wanna recognize the many Henry Kirkland descendants who are joining us. They are viewing right now live from all over the country, including Washington, DC, Chicago, Michigan, Atlanta, and the California Bay Area. We are so thrilled that each of you could be a part of this. And we are joined by Henry's great granddaughter, Erin Nanette Renfro Coulter, his second great grandchildren, Leah Coulter El Amin, Greg Arlen Coulter, Aaron Coulter, also Barbara Quincer Coulter, and, their, and his third great grandchildren, Amari El Amin, Nia El Amin, uh, Malia Coulter, and Keith Tipper, Lori Tipper Watkins, and Andrea Tipper Harris. And if I've left out any of the cousins or great great grandchildren, please forgive me. I've had the honor for the last few years to write and produce monologues for reenactors like Rodney who have portrayed famous Colombians that are buried in the historic Columbia Cemetery. That cemetery is located on Broadway near Garth Street. In early 2019, I was asked to write a first person monologue for Henry Kirkland. Thanks to a terrific performance by Rodney Sheely, it went over really, really well. And the fact that Rodney was standing next to an unmarked grave was not lost on the audiences. I'm grateful that Senior Associate Dean Brian Garten was in the audience that day. He, like Billy Polanski of the Columbia Urban Ag Farm, Jeannie Rogers, Nancy Thomas, Cindy Mustard, all of the friends of the Columbia Historic Cemetery, and Jim Witt, Chairman of the Sharp End and African American Heritage Trail Committee here in Columbia, was keen to correct the situation. And thanks to about 100 local donors, over $8,000 was raised to produce a headstone for Henry and his wife, Martha one that was worthy of his legacy. Kirkland was born before emancipation and he excelled through his natural talents and self-education to an extent difficult to fathom due to the fact that his entire professional life took place during Jim Crow in the Little Dixie Belt of Missouri. It began when he was 14 and he was hired out to work at the farm of retired General Joseph Beeler Douglas, a former Boone County Sheriff and County Clerk, as well as a former Union officer. And he was hired to work in Douglas's greenhouse. Now Douglas himself, it appears, had such an affinity for gardening that he hired two German master gardeners to manage the greenhouse. Kirkland, for 30 cents a day at first, mind you, he's 14 years old, got his education in gardening, pruning, and grafting from those two apparently demanding taskmasters. By the time he was in his young 20s, he'd been hired by the state of Missouri for its Board of Agriculture so that he could be sent throughout the state to teach gardening and horticulture to fellow black Missourians. He was soon hired by the University of Missouri to manage their School of Agriculture's greenhouse. And it was not too long before Henry's supervisor, a professor in the school, turned over classes on the subjects of pruning and grafting, and probably more than that, to Henry. All of those classes were taught outdoors because as Brian has already mentioned, the university would not allow a black person inside university buildings unless they were there to clean those buildings or perhaps stoke a coal-fired furnace. We don't know the exact year, but it's likely that around the late 1880s, Henry began teaching hundreds of white students over several years. As the decades passed and Henry began to farm for himself on his own land on Switzler Street here in Columbia, his reputation grew. It grew across the nation. He often attended black businessmen's conferences across the country where he lectured on not just horticulture but entrepreneurship in the black community. He also donated thousands of dollars over the years to young black students who wanted to pursue a college education. He would be extremely proud, I'm sure, to know that nearly all of his descendants watching this are college graduates with one great, great, great granddaughter, Nia, who is currently in the class of 2021 at Duke University. 
Anna and his family deserve every part of this day and this honor. And I feel certain he would be incredibly pleased by this lab and excited by the thousands of future students who will make a future for themselves by what they learn in this lab. Thank you very much. Vice Chancellor and Dean Chris Daubert joined the University and the College of Agriculture, Food and Natural Resources in August of 2017. He joined Mizzou from North Carolina State University, where he was a professor and head of the Department of Food, Bioprocessing and Nutrition Science Services and director of the Food Rheology Laboratory. He has led our college through the development and now the implementation of a robust strategic plan focused around six priorities, one of which is student success. Dean Daubert. Thank you, Dean Garden. As Dean of this great college, I am honored to be here today to celebrate Mr. Kirkland and also to share what this laboratory means to our students who we consider our number one stakeholder, to our students and to our students' learning opportunities. Mr. Kirkland's history and his story, it's incredibly inspiring. Our hope is that through this special classroom, he will continue to inspire all of our students for decades to come. We are thrilled today to have three Kaffner students in the lab and hopefully many more watching us on live stream. Lydia Jefferson, where is Lydia? Lydia is in the, the back of the room. Lydia is president of the Kaffner Manners Student Organization. Manners stands for Minorities in Agriculture, Natural Resources, and Related Sciences. Welcome, Lydia. <laughs> Elizabeth Gunter is with us this afternoon. Elizabeth, where are you? Right there. Elizabeth is president of the Kaffner Student Council. Welcome, Elizabeth. And lastly, Maya Poehler, a senior in plant sciences, and she'll be one of our speakers this afternoon. So good afternoon, Maya. So Dean Garden mentioned in my introduction that the number one priority in our strategic plan, the drive to distinction, is student success. This division of plant sciences learning lab, it's a new state of the art facility that will inspire students to engage more deeply in learning about plants, their interactions with pathogens and insects, and impacts on the environment around them. The design of the new learning lab provides an opportunity for hands-on experiential learning with clustered seating to promote collaboration, group work, and problem-solving projects. Video enhancements that enable the projection of material from an instructor's microscope onto large monitors, and lastly, teaching via distance education. Technology in the classroom will enable virtual lectures from experts outside MU and virtual field trips to world-class facilities like the Danforth Plant Sciences Center in St. Louis. The overall design and technology of the new learning lab will enable our college to better prepare students for the modern plant science workforce. And it will be a centerpiece of undergraduate recruitment for the Division of Plant Sciences. So now we have a special announcement. We are thrilled to not only dedicate this laboratory today, but also to announce the establishment of a scholarship in Mr. Kirkland's name for future plant science students the Henry Kirkland Memorial Scholarship.
Because this is such an important cause, I am pleased to share that Kaffner, our college, is providing $12,500 from the Kaffner Priorities Fund as a challenge gift to help motivate others to give. Our first gift has already been committed, a $2,500 commitment from friends who also are excited to celebrate Mr. Kirkland. With us today, you've already met Chris Campbell, the executive director of the Boone County Historical Society, who led the fundraising effort for Henry's Headstone. Chris and the committee have generously contributed $2,500, and we are so grateful that they were able to make the very first gift to this scholarship. Thank you, Chris. The scholarship will be given each year to an underrepresented minority student studying plant sciences. With this first gift and the Kaffner Challenge gift, this brings our total to $15,000. Our hope is to, re to raise the remaining $10,000 quickly so that we can make the first award in time for the fall 2021 semester. I encourage everyone to make a gift to help us celebrate Mr. Kirkland's history with Kaffner, and most especially to support our aspiring plant scientists from diverse backgrounds. You will find more information about donating on our Kaffner website after this live stream event has ended at kaffner.missouri.edu backslash Henry Kirkland. One of the big strengths of our plant sciences program is the hands-on nature of our training, which provides students with the real world experience necessary to prepare them for success after graduation. Preparing students for the plant sciences workforce through hands-on learning opportunities sounds familiar, doesn't it? It resonates with Mr. Kirkland's legacy. Mr. Kirkland truly was a precursor to what we aspire to do with our students with this new laboratory. So now I am happy to introduce you to one of our amazing students, Maya Puller. She is a senior in plant sciences from San Antonio, Texas, and she plans to graduate in December. Maya has taken a class, she's taken a class in the basement laboratory that preceded this new space. So Maya can speak to the incredible upgrade of this new state-of-the-art facility. She, Maya, she's an exceptional student athlete as a member of Mizzou's track and field team and has been a member of the SEC Honor Roll and the Kaffner Dean's List. Welcome, Maya. Hello everyone. Thank you, Dean Dalbert, for that wonderful introduction. So my name is Maya Puller. I'm a senior student athlete and plant science major here at Mizzou, and I'm very honored to be here speaking with you all today. I would also like to say a special hello to Mr. Kirkland's family who are watching from afar. We're very honored that you can witness today's dedication. One of my first classes that I have taken, or one of my favorite classes that I've taken throughout undergrad was Plant Structure and Function with Dr. Nauman. So when I took the class two years ago, it was located in the basement of Mumford Hall. And as I was writing the speech, I was curious as to just how old Mumford Hall was. So I looked it up and found that Mumford Hall was constructed almost 100 years ago in 1922. So it has been around for a while. And while buildings like that are full of character and history, they can also lack the technology that younger generations are beginning to learn with. And that is what is so great about this space. One of my favorite features is the camera and microphone access all around the room, which allows a student to still attend class and ask questions without having to physically be here. And that's a great feature to have, especially right now in this ongoing COVID pandemic, where some students don't feel comfortable attending class in person or simply can't be here due to health reasons. And I have to say that I'm a bit jealous that I'm never gonna get a chance to use this lab, but I am very excited for the students that will. So when Dr. Garten first approached me and asked me if I could speak today, I was very eager to be a part of this. As a black biracial student who has met very few other black students in the plant science department, as well as the agriculture program as a whole, it is very important to me to honor Mr. Kirkland today. He paved the way for people who look like me. 
He paved the way for people who are not black, but are minorities and have had a difference in education because of that. And it is because of men and women like Mr. Kirkland fighting for the rights to an education that was on par with that of their white counterparts that I am able to walk the graduation stage this upcoming December and seek a higher education back in my home state of Texas. And this lab, in my opinion, is a great start to honoring a man who has done so much for this university simply by wanting to learn and share his knowledge with others at a time where it was frowned upon because of the color of his skin. And it is my hope that with new additions to the plant science facilities such as this, that we can attract young and talented black minds to this program. So in closing, again, I'm very honored to be here for this event today, and I'm very excited for the future of this lab. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Maya. I know why we picked you to talk today. Moon Choi serves as president of the University of Missouri as a dual role as chancellor of the University of Missouri and president of the four campus University of Missouri system. Before serving as president, oh, they want a little history. Right? Before serving as president of the University of Missouri, Dr. Choi's 25 year career in higher education included serving as an assistant and associate professor uh, at the University of Illinois in Chicago, Department Head of Mechanical Engineering at Drexel University, then Dean of Engineering at the University of Connecticut. Later, he took the role of Provost and Executive Vice President at the University of Connecticut before we were lucky that he came here to be with us. President Choi. Good afternoon. I have to say that it's very difficult to follow Maya. What beautiful words. And I could say that Mr. Henry Kirkland paved the way for me. Before I begin, I do wanna recognize our curator, Robin Wenneker, and also former interim president, Michael Middleton who has contributed so much to this university and to the United States to provide opportunities for everyone. So Mike, thank you. Curator Winokur, thank you. I did not know about the history of Mr. Henry Kirkland until I learned about the tombstone that was being placed as part of the articles in Columbia Daily Tribune and Columbia Missourian. And I learned more about him and his contributions. And it really is fitting that we are celebrating his contributions to the university in the very program that he helped to create into a national powerhouse. Planned Sciences Program is one of the foremost programs of its kind in the United States. It took many years for us to recognize his contribution. But now I ask each one of us and our friends as they pass by this laboratory or this building to think about his strength, his resilience, and his vision for excellence that achieved so much given the challenges that he had in front of him. And for the benefit of the Kirkland family, that are watching, I'd like to ask all of us to take about 20 seconds and reflect what Mr. Kirkland would be thinking if he were able to watch us. And by the way, he may very well be watching us from up there. So let's take a little moment to think about it. Thank you. Now it's been said a number of times that Mr. Kirkland is likely the first African-American instructor at the university and that perhaps he may be. Uh, but I think as president, I have a little bit of authority and I'm here with the, uh, with the curator. Let's make it official. He is the official first black instructor at the University of Missouri. And 
We are so proud of his accomplishments and proud of the accomplishments throughout the generation, the Kirkland family. So thank you all for being here. Now we're gonna have the pleasure of unfurling the plaques, but I would like to ask the students, Lydia, Elizabeth, and Maya to join me, interim, former interim president Middleton and curator Wenneker, and also Dean Dalbert, please. Yes, President Joy asked me to read it. So before I before I read it, let me give you a, a little background about it. So where's Billy Polanski? Billy, please wave your hand. Billy was on the community, the, the local uh, community members, I don't know, seven, eight, nine folks, and painstakingly it took a lot of time, right, Billy, to to craft this to get the words just right to recognize Mr. Kirkland. Uh, these are the words that are on the backside of his headstone at Columbia Cemetery. And we asked for permission uh, to put them here in this room. And the reason being is because tomorrow, a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, we wanted to make sure that when students came into this room and they saw the name Henry Kirkland, they knew who Henry Kirkland was. So I'll read him to you. Gardener, entrepreneur, educator. Henry Kirkland was thought to be the first African-American, now that we have an official, he's the first, to teach students at the University of Missouri. But he did so in an informal, unofficial capacity as the university did not allow blacks to hold official teaching positions during his lifetime. He was nationally acclaimed for his fruit and vegetable growing techniques and consulted by many, including Booker T. Washington, Though born into slavery and having never attended school, he became one of Columbia's most successful businessmen. And on the bottom it says, as inscribed on the headstone at the Columbia Cemetery. Thank you everyone for joining us today, whether it was in person or was on live stream. We especially want to thank Mr. Kirkland's family for joining us through the live stream. We look forward to the day when we can meet you in person and we hope that you will come to Columbia so you can see that your great, great and great, great, great grandfather's headstone at the Columbia Cemetery and that please, please contact us, contact President Choi, Dean Daubert, contact me, our curators. Please come, we would love to host you and show you this excellent learning facilities for our students that are named in Mr. Henry Kirkland's honor. Thank you all very, very much.